Following my lecture on true objective ontologies of forces and powers in the universe, I would like to move on to more human related things. We'll start with thought forms, then move on to the collection of thought forms in the Noosphere or Gregors, then God forms, afterwards deified qualities that are standing for different forms of ontologies, true entities, that is true deities, gods and goddesses and other forms of ontologies that are existing independently of mortal human race and what is in the egregores, thought forms and god form inventiveness and uh, thus constituting ontological forces out there in the universe. So let us begin. Theories of magic, tribalism and individuation or thought forms and egregores. So we will start from Denk forms, that is a concept invented by one German philosopher. And uh, here they are treated in this briefing as thought forms or subtle emanations of the mental field around the human mind. Everything that we know, everything that is related to the cognitive arena, uh, the sen, it may be read by the telepaths, the mentats, the other side, the dead, uh, the ontologies by your fellow uh, radionic department, psyops, and anyone who has the capacity to tap into this uh, mental field, as well as egregores or collectives of beliefs, cognitions. This is related to the hive mind project or trying to equalize everyone, which is a complete assault on the individuation in liberty, in an order, in an honesty. So let us begin. Uh, by necessity, this brief is one aspect. It does not entail majority of other models to explain a holistic approach, but it is far from dilettant and its duty is to focus on a figment of the holistic approach which it attempts to describe. Now, told forms can take as many forms as there are modalities and functions of the human mind and the cognitive switches, uh, the whole cognitive modeling. For example, the simplest thought form is a verbalization of the thought, here be dragons. If we verbalize in our thoughts, it produces micro sounds. So yes, it may be taken over and if somebody has the correct uh, uh, devices, they may take over and read your thoughts. So next time you think, try not to use verbalies. I know you are trained in verbal thinking, but preferably ideational thinking is the best encipherment possible. Although you may use decoys, verbal decoys, in order to mm, play the disinformation war or misinformation campaign against your opponents who think they know what you think, but they have no bloody idea. The most complex and sophisticated thought forms are generated by silence and synergy, polysyntax, multi-level polysemous, multi-contextual, masked, disguised, encoded, encrypted, ciphered, psychosomatically programmed. For example, a ritual dance could be an example astralistically transmitted to the receiver as a message if it's encoded properly. Egregores can be a common denominator of collectives of two or more mental spheres of people, the noosphere, nous, mind. They interpenetrate each other depending on the kononia or togetherness or ideatic ecclesia. So there are plenty of uh, network subcultures nowadays, let's call them subcultures, that are like pocketed, uh, pocketed collectives of beliefs and so on and so on. That is, they are extracted among and emancipated as the character or ethos of a particular egregore within the boundaries of the mental sphere. It can be a biopsychological egregore, an instinctive egregore, such as uh, fear, arousal and so on. Uh, it can be a sophisticated ideological egregore, for example, authoritarianism or anarchism. It may be a religious, for example, a Christian egregore or a Buddhist one, an occult egregore. Some of them were used uh, consciously. For example, Fraternitas Saturni used Gotos as a god form to put the egregore of the communitas and their knowledge into it, in a way, scribed into it. Uh, a linguistic egregore, the way we express ideas, it can be a cultural egregore, for example, a nation, uh, the collectivity of ethnic identities and related behaviors and mentalities. Now, unknowingly associated with an egregore by mixing with people who have similar arrangement of thought forms, 
is often the case with people who are neither mature nor have developed autonomy and critical thinking in individuation, with a weak resistance to the submissive influence of foreign egregores, brainwashing, indoctrination, and so on, which ends in the absorption of mental ideatic clusters in one's own mental sphere, according to the law of distribution and resilience to it. This law states that each egregore, thought form, and idea will be distributed differently according to the cognitive topological spaces of each mind. According to their phenotyping and liminal entropy, their resilience of liminal absorption threshold, their resilience to brainwashing, for example, I don't know, Scientology or Jehovah's Witnesses, they are brainwashed. And they share in the collective force of the egregore that is often wise abused. So the souls, the mental powers and all that are submissive to it, similar to the Christian egregore. Now, therefore, they will be interpreted differently when translated into the language of persona and what follows interpreted. Let's not forget that the mind is linked with the soul and the soul that the mind that is brainwashed is a soul that is brainwashed. Soul washed. <laughs> Egregores can intermingle and the result is multiple cha changing constellations of mental fields and mutual dynamics and interdependencies, consciously connecting with a group egregore, for example, online, in a network, through a speech, and so on and so on, helps to attune to a particular working group, whether in magical work or in ceremonial affinity with a larger group of participants. Conversely, we can be ritually indoctrinated as in sectarians into an egregore, be it a cult, a blind religion, a political ideology, or sealed into an egregore, for example, through baptismal mark, which is a form of a curse upon, uh, for example, Judeo-Christian ideas. Uh, Jews used to baptize uh, in order to mark the rebellion against the Romans, so Christians are just sectarians of Jews and the like. Egregores can be protected by their own mental field, by entities charged with their protection and by their own power, or by people and entities charged with walking on the egregore. It may be that unlicensed or other entities and persons plug in under the given egregore and during its operation imprint the egregore with their own mental cuts and polishes, cognitive ideas and so on, or root or camouflage themselves in it. Some egregores are programmable, those of the, for example, Scientological sect, Dianetics, Jehovah's Witnesses, fundamental evangelical groups, various New Age fringe movements, deliberate social engineering of sections of society via the media, infotainment or computerized cybernetics radionics propag propagated via the eighth sphere of radio communication, for example, the Hive project, and frequencies compatible with the resonance of human brains. Now, people with great willpower, high resistance to conditioning and magnetics can either survive the onslaught of indoctrination and brainwashing and do it their way, or influence many people through their charisma. Whether they are right or wrong, whether they spread harmful nonsense or realized ideas, they can dominate group egregore and consciously or unconsciously implant their own mental sphere programming in other groupings. In working magical ethics, it is crucial not to interfere in the mental sphere of others unless they assault you. Others will meddle with yours, but punitive and retaliatory action is a separate chapter. This is also related to the soul sphere, because the soul is often a passive recipient of thought forms, emotive cognitive content and egregores. Think of imprints or engrams. Conduct your communications carefully. People who are susceptible to manipulation should arm themselves with methods that help them recognize their own autonomy, become self-aware, critical thinkers, and understand their own position and relationship to other people, ideas, egregores of others, and the world, tunnel realities. Some people, and certainly those who are on the other side together with entities, can read parts of the information from the mental sphere, Therefore, it is beneficial to train synthetic languages and methods of encryption as well as to camouflage the declared intentions under and outside the subliminal fields to avoid trying to decode them, decode them by offenders and nosy pigs. Sometimes, frankly, openness is recommended because a fortified citadel is just inviting to be besieged and conquered, but in all major magical ops, psyops, it is advantageous to scramble or operate on a plane that is inaccessible to the other side, but over to larger powers, forces, as I mentioned, the ontological true entities. At least the parts we want to get away with and avoid detection on the mortal earthly level. 
On an individual level, that is personal privacy, inner silence is recommended while we can walk with non-verbal ideas, mentalities, idea constructs, motives, inclinations which have enough individual imprints to be undecipherable by the majority of uninvolved entities, human magicians and various psyops departments. Mind scrambling is a useful technique where we create false facades, a false identity, deceptive communication where we communicate only the parts of ourselves that we want to convey all create illusory masks that are a form of defensive disinformation, misinformation and denial of information. Candor is only useful in direct communication and even then when everything has eyes and ears. We can play openness and use double or triple speak to convey false information to our opponent while withholding true information from our interlocutor. We should often think about what would normal people do to us if they would if they knew the content of our thoughts, if it became public knowledge. It is not to grow paranoid and censor yourself, but it is to preserve a safety grid. The same method is applied to the other side, cautiously, harshly, firmly, in a Machiavellian, or rather legalistic, Hanfazian, that was Machiavellian 17 centuries before Machiavelli way, openly when necessary. From my experience, I have come to the conclusion that the great forces, and we are dealing here with high magic, high ionic magic or star magic, with which we walk during the ceremonies, recognize the true intentions and contents anyway precognitively with the foresight, forethought and protonoia. Even if they are veiled to unauthorized persons and entities, it is important that no one from the other side on earth knows what we are about. If we are working with high entities, orders of gods, and so on, that should be completely camouflaged. The methods are as old as the African shamanic masks, which were meant to imitate the nature spirits to be one of them, so that the soul totem of the wild beast, the sorcerer, the diamond is tamed, and to disguise our own intentions, because when we hide behind the mask, we separate the space of the known profane from what belongs to the spirit, sacred, and to the uncanny, terra incognita. Children have a similar methods when they say, I'm not here, in the ritualization of their theater they disappear into their environment playing hide and seek or throwing away the toy, they play the little magician's banished toy, hence and disappears. This is essentially how it is when I know my friend's children who scatter their toys in the abysses of treasure troves that are so difficult for adults to discover. When we move through the streets among anonymous people, we dehumanize them a little bit by force of habit. They never receive the masks of closeness, proximity, intimacy, the other is a little distant, the shared glances are devoid of content when we detach. They are at least apathic, if something catches our attention they can be erotic or at most magnetic. Nevertheless, there is no engagement here that exists between acquaintances, relatives or close friends. So it is a skill of detachment for from everything that surrounds you, all these symbols, signs, adverts, all the bombardment of bullshit. Many contexts of exchange in the sphere of anonymity can be expressed in the intentions connected with the superficial interpretation of the other, a flirtatious look, an aggressive gesture, indifference, the game of gestures belong to the refined. The apparent gestures belong to the vulgar and immature, it is still another game of appearances and as ifs. The ancient Hindi dance theater was refined in the use of gestures that are not known in the vulgar western societies. It is great to create one's own code of gestures, for example with the gods that is completely misinterpreted or unknown to the opponent. The interpretation of gestures is a matter of consent and anonymity. The more subtle gestures are rarely noticed or misinterpreted, the absence of gestures can be mistaken for a gesture. The obvious ones are quickly grasped. I have experimented a lot with different observation that is taking myself out of the context of gestures as if it did not notice them and closely observing the behavior of the people around me. I have found that uh, modern people when they lack feedback, when they cannot see themselves reflected in you, whether subconsciously or overtly they become agitated like monkeys because their ever-changing monkey brains demand input so that they can respond. If you are very still with a fixed gaze, they may take you for a psychopath. Observe how they change quickly and uh, presenting plenty of superficial movements being dissettled, unconsciously stressed. And that is a good experience in studying the complete inability of the Western mind to focus. 
It is hard to treat the other stranger, the Xeno, as something different. It is a treat for your own movements, gestures, perhaps something fascinating, something you make fun of, something you fear but rarely approach. When you get to know a person, we enter an imaginary virtuality of a sphere of koinonia in the realm of knowledge. By establishing contact, having a conversation, we deepen this virtuality when we shape interpersonal relations in the way we want to. That is most useful or amiable to us. We do not feel that our privacy is being revealed, that we must jovially divulge any information. Instead, we rattle masks, narratives, small talk, deep conversations, showing a greater or lesser part of our, our authenticity or false masks, being double, triple, four-faced if must be. There are variations in metaf metamorphosis. In the end, no one knows who we are, and this is a fit a complaint. Because some circles are so damaging that they should not know. It can lead to gossip and reputational damage. That is not our fault. But these people were never of high, high character. Therefore, it is enough to know thyself. Nobody else needs to. If you know thyself, the gods know you, the spirits know you, the dead know you. Mortals need not. In the end, those who should know see a holistic being that we wanted to portray. And this is another achievement. And find a circle of friends here. Sometimes it is impossible to create a facade for our person, but the more skillfully, for example, when we turn vulgar or we deflate our will. We master our being, the better we succeed in communicating important things we want to pass on, be it ideas, self-expression, etc. I have dined with political officials and the president of a country and his wife and charmed them all as uh, an anonymous person. I have been in law circles and seen strong and tough. I have been among snobs and pretended to be a redneck to their disdain. So it's almost always a play. I have been among smart people and had something graceful to contribute. Now, when pigs rush in or people of low altitude, complete spineless idiots, despise them or you will lose your nature. Don't mix with pigs. That's my advice. Nothing is more annoying than pigs running around in the ethers or souls of pigs. Show them an ugly side and watch them rising their own feces, proud of themselves. What a sight. Remain a god amongst gods, a diamond amongst diamonds. Why did I write all this? Because it is beneficial to deal with thought forms and group unity in a similar way. Homonoia, unity of minds and hearts based on individual freedoms. Inspired. If we mingle with everyone, we become like a mob. We generalize, we lose our precious time, we charge spiritual spheres of people who are pathetic and we lose important expressions, we lose our inner truth and power that could be used by a parasitic egregore. We lose our nature and ethos amongst pigs and forget that we are lions and dragons amongst them. When human resources are in constant derangement and our thought forms are in chaotic motion, it is difficult to focus, concentrate, to achieve effective magical communication with the gods. Now, using Shannon and Weaver's theory of mathematical communication, one of the interfaces illustrates how we can achieve one goal by communicating from many transmitting sources, even if it entails bilocation, trilocation, and dispatching servitors in order to influence informational goals. Or how we can achieve many goals among many receivers by communicating with one source. The whole book is worth studying. The rest is a matter of media selection, intent, dissemination, rhetoric, tools, and algorithms of content delivery, its duration, continuity, strength, context appropriate to the audience, its substance, place value, status, interpretation, reception, discharge of the content to the final recipient according to a particular vision, and its negotiating in unison. No one wants to pet people who choose to follow a will rather than take power over themselves into their own hands. It is better to be amongst equal of will and equal of power. No one is wasteful enough to educate complete fools, and yet you must guard yourself against them. Stupidity is better controlled before it reaches for power. By the time the mob appoints the pigs to the light, it is far too late. Therefore, all egalitarian meritocracies, responsible freedom, paideic standards, institutional protection of the political systems and aristocratic elites with the common good in mind should be protected as a priority from the abuse of power by the pigs of various populist, autocratic, authoritarian, fascist, pseudo-democratic and theocratic regimes in order to maintain a republic of well strong, cultural, educated and polite rule. The issue is that there are no modern elites. There is no modern 
aristocracy. And uh, citing Solon, uh, Athenian statesmen, do not blame the gods that pegs are in power. You put them there. Thank you.